if I look a little bit tired I'm just back from Newcastle in England and uh, it's always the way in hotels eh? you, you have your evening you come back you get to bed at a reasonable hour and some prat uh, comes in with his wife at two in the morning steaming at their nut in the next door room and you're in this noise and Christ not much sleep however uh, I got to see some uh, guitar shops, went to three guitar shops in Newcastle, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Also in this video, we'll have a very quick, maybe three and a half minute guitar lesson, just dissecting what I was doing there. I'm going to talk about Jack Roosh. Um, and also I'm hoping to get my wife on this video as well to talk about an email that I got from uh, a viewer. Might be interesting. She's due back quite soon, so we'll get her on the video in a minute when she comes home. Yes, I went to three guitar shops in Newcastle. This is something I do now and again. I, I, I'll just go away for the night in a hotel with the intention of having two glasses of Merlot whilst reading Guitarist magazine in a nice hotel. I just like that. I find it really peaceful. Two glasses of wine, Guitarist magazine, and just walking around the city. So I played a uh, Fender Jaguar in Guitar Guitar. Didn't like it at all, but it's just because it was a Johnny Marr signature model. It was about, was it two grand or something? It, it didn't gel with it. Not because it was a Jaguar, because it was a modified Jaguar and I didn't like the modifications. I wanted to sound like Tobias. So I picked, I picked the wrong Jaguar. Didn't like that. Then I went to another guitar shop, PMT, and played. Oh, I played a Fender Ventura Jazzmaster. I have to say, right, if you're in the market for Fenders of a mid-price point, I've 
played about three or four Vinteras now. I'm genuinely impressed with Vinteras. This Jazzmaster sounded lovely. We are live. This is my wife, Rachel. Is this your second time on my channel? Yes, indeed. I think so. Yes. Okay. Very excited. Right. So I got an email from a viewer and the last paragraph and a very personal question, if you allow. I see you're wearing a wedding ring. <laughs> How do you manage spending that much time with your guitar? <laughs> and he says, no kids or maybe, maybe older kids. You must have a very understanding wife. <laughs> so I replied, but I want you to see if it's even true. Right, or did okay. I just make all this up? Yeah. So I said, now on to I'm laughing myself. Now on to balancing guitar time with family time. I, I tend not to play too much during the week. Would you agree? Yeah. Since I work yeah. Monday to Friday, so Monday to Thursday, eight thirty to five thirty. I said, so I'll be on the sofa most evenings with my wife, watching TV or going out for our evening walks. That's yeah. about right. Huh? Yeah. Um, and my son is fifteen. Spends a lot of time in his room on his PlayStation. Sixteen. Is he sixteen? Is he? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm really involved in my family. Um, I put, I'll be lucky enough to squeeze even an hour during the week. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. So far, Jimmy. we're good. Yeah. But when Friday rolls around, I tend to get out of bed and stroll straight into my guitar room. Because you don't work on a Friday. Just, Correct. Yeah. First day off. Where I'll play for, and I've got in inverted commas, an unspecified amount of time. Mm. That's about right, yeah, isn't it? I, yeah, yeah. In order to catch my morning creativity, Mm -hmm. My wife understands this, and so it's accepted that my creativity and energy will only last for four or five hours max, and then I'll tire, and I'll wander downstairs, and I put in at that point we'll tend to do something together, or maybe we'll just delay getting together till evening if you're doing your own thing. Yeah. Is, that, is that fair to say? Yeah, um, when Friday comes around, that's your creative day, and I know now that if you want to, if you've got the feeling in your fingers, then you just go with it. And at the weekend, same thing again. Morning is your creative time. I know that. Um, and I do my own thing in the morning and our son does his own thing in the morning. But then when you're making a video and I know it's making a video time, then I just have to let you get on with it. And that could be a whole Saturday sometimes. Can be um because it's pretty intense and you do take after take after take <laughs> so, so one take yes yeah, so we do one take there's no reruns because i'm really good but yeah yeah um and you've practiced whatever you're filming a lot um yeah talk about that because yeah. because i create something or i create the seed of an idea or i steal something and then embellish but you must get sick of hearing the same tune being developed every, mm -hmm. you know, for hours and end. Maybe not so much during the week, although sometimes, but certainly at the weekend, if I'm not making a video that weekend, I'm playing the same thing over and over and changing mm. tiny bits. How do you feel about that? Yeah, because you can be playing, you can be working on something for weeks, literally weeks and months sometimes, and you know you've got something coming and you're honing it and crafting it and then when you're not physically playing you're watching yourself or listening to yourself to to what do you say your quality con qc and quality control yeah. in it um so i do hear the same songs or the same lyrics uh musical lyrics again and again and again and they get stuck in my head and That's true, yeah. yeah um so i'll come downstairs and yeah rachel will be whistling a tune that I've just come up with and you don't even know you're doing it eh? yeah. just because I'm so brain -wise. and of course I finished with um, uh, Saturdays can be similar although we do like to make time uh, some we do spend time some time. yeah we do spend <laughs> some we are married after all so we do tend to what coffee going out for coffee and cakes yeah, kind of our thing or, or, or just walks. yeah yeah Simple pleasures. <laughs> yeah. Fitted around the guitar. Fitted around the guitar. No, I'm not. Well, I'm no, not. you're not. You know, you know, sometimes, sometimes you get sick of it, 
and you're working on something, he's working on something and it's just not happening. And so I think you're coming to realise that sometimes you just have to stop and have a break, have a walk, do something, get out. And then doing that, getting away from the music and the guitar, I think sometimes that helps you just get over a bump or something. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's very intense. Is it a bind it being married to me? <laughs> I couldn't possibly. I did say, look, I said, um, I said, bottom line, I'm a hugely creative person and it would be completely unhealthy for me not to spend those hours on my playing. It's a huge part of me, it defines me, and my wife understands that. I says, but I am very lucky to have you. That's such an understanding <laughs> wife. I, am. I said, but I put, there's only so many days in the week and something has to give. And for me, that is time spent with male friends. I said, <laughs> I simply That's, don't have any. Well, you don't have friends. I don't really. have friends. Yeah. You're my friend. Yeah. I don't have any friends. I'm just not the kind of guy who goes out and hangs out with friends. I've never, I know that goes against most people's recommendation for a happy life. Friendships are one of the key things in life. Just not for me. I'm just not a friends guy. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's why I have the time that would be devoted to friends is devoted to my guitars. <laughs> I'm a nice guy though. I'm, oh, yeah, I can be yes. social. It's just not well, me to be the guy that has the friends and goes out and spends time with them. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. So, yeah. Yeah. Are you miserable? <laughs> Spending time with me? No. No. You do love me. I do. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't know what question you were going to ask me then. So that yeah. was... Um, I wanted to get your... Yeah. Just your honest feel for it. Yeah. So I was watching Jack Roosh the other day, a video about nine months ago, something like that. I think it was entitled Wes Montgomery's uh, Denatural Blues. I'll put a link to it in the description and you can hear this kind of thing played, played properly and not by my ham-fisted approach. And you probably think, oh Paul, you're being modest. No, check out Jack's, you'll see I stole his first verse and then I went on to do my own stuff. But just the way he plays is just creamier than me. He's like Chris Buck and he's just got this in, in ability, this ability sorry, to just make all the notes just meld together like he's not even trying. But it got me to thinking, and here's the point. This is the kind of stuff that if you want to get better, you should really make the effort to know. For example, the chords. When you first start playing a blues in A, you assume it's going to be... containing the famous three chords, your one, your four, and your five. But you really know this kind of shit when you hear chord sequences that aren't as basic as that. You should be able to recognize slightly more sophisticated chord sequences. So let's look at the chords for this particular thing because Jack didn't tell us the chords. He just said, let's just focus on Wes Montgomery's, where he's playing, what scales he's playing from, but we'll not worry about any other chord other than the one and the four and the five. And I was like, oh, no, I'll tell, Tell us the chords. So I'll tell you the chords. Here we go. So you've got your one chord, A7, up to your four chord. I'm making it a nine, a D9. Back to my one chord, just a baby version. Then temporarily opening things up with a quick E minor seven. Back to your one. Up to the four chord again. In my case, D9. Diminish to raise the tension. To the one, then watch this a B minor seven, up a tone to C sharp minor seven, then a semi tone to C minor seven, B minor seven, and the five chord. Back to your one, and then turn it around. Right, there's your chords. Let's very quickly get into the lead playing then. So starting the same way as Jack, bringing in the A. And I did a little drag down, as you can see, I'm just holding down a D chord until I break away and become a lead player again. Now, this is about what to talk about. The band now goes temporarily to E minor seven to open things up. 
And Jack takes advantage of that and references that by arpeggiating what looks like a G chord, which you can do because the notes in G are practically the same as the notes in E minor 7. There's always been a special relationship between those... Well, I can't explain I'm not a theory guy. Anyway, he goes... <laughs> tying in with that to that but then it goes into diminished these are three fret separation sounds to resolve to D then he does something called the whole half step which is basically from the family of diminished I'm not a theory guy but as you know diminished is three fret separations Three, I guess two plus one is three, but one plus two is also three. So I'm familiar with enhancing the diminished sound by cutting it up into small chunks that mathematically add up to three. So I'm familiar with Robin Ford's half whole step. But I've never in my life contemplated whole half. It's my homework now. I have to go away now and think, why did that so sound so good? Um, it was on his way back to the four chord and took him back. So it took him back to the one chord. I now have to go away and work out that. How can I get that to my playing? Fantastic. Learn that. Beautiful. Then, of course, the band goes to this B minor 7. And he just beautifully references that. But now the band goes to this C sharp minor 7 and he goes. So it looks like, whoa, where's he going? It's really just re uh, referencing that C sharp minor 7. Then, of course, the band goes down a semitone. What's it going to do now? Well, as we know that, any minor chord also has a relationship to that chord, as I've just said earlier on. I can't explain it very well. So he just kind of plays to you and me what looks like a sort of a an E flat chord, but he's really just referencing that uh, C minor seven now. I'm making myself confused now. As we return to that chord, just just playing off that chord. Then he takes it up three frets. And then we're at the five chord. But he does a little augmented run. He goes. Just because he's a smart arse. A very talented smart arse. And so that's, and then I just did my own stuff after that and embellished as I do.